What do weight loss programs and books on how to be successful have in common? They both often fall prey to the survival bias. Are you of that age yet where you catch yourself saying, they don't make them like they used to? Or perhaps you look at the older buildings in your city and think of them as more beautiful and more resistant to tear than newer constructions. Or how about art? I have been caught comparing postmodern artists to the enduring masters of the past, but that comparison isn't fair. These situations have in common that we are comparing two very different groups, while thinking that they are, in fact, comparable. We compare the current group of buildings or artworks, a group which includes the good ones, the bad ones, and the really, really bad ones, with the buildings and artworks of the past which have managed to survive. Why did they survive? Because they were more solidly built and or were deemed more beautiful, so they were preserved. But as you can now see, it's not a fair comparison. The survival bias rears its head when we make a decision based on past successes, while ignoring past failures. Now, how does that apply to your health? Let's say we know two people who are on this fad diet. They did it, they lost a lot of weight, and they managed to keep it off for the past two years. The diet works, right? It's a good diet, and everyone who wants to lose weight should try it, right? We actually don't know that. Here's our logic. One, these two people went on this diet. Two, these two people lost weight and kept it off for two years. Three, therefore, this diet works. What we forget are those people. Those are all the people who went on this diet and did not successfully lose weight, or they put the lost weight back on within a year. We don't hear from the failures nearly as much as we hear from the successes, and that's the survival bias. It's a lot like advice books on how to be rich and successful. Think about it. These books are written by people who happen to become successful. They look at their past and decide that their success must have been due to these seven things that they did. Meanwhile, you look around and you'll see plenty of schmucks who did those seven things, but who never became successful. Because success is a combination of talent, hard work, and luck. A healthy dollop of luck. So that's one of the reasons why anecdotal evidence around health should be taken with an entire salt shaker. The anecdotes you hear are probably not representative. You hear about the people who did better after an intervention, but you may not hear about the people who did worse. To avoid the survival bias, we need to move our focus away from unreliable forms of evidence, like anecdotes, and towards stronger ones, like rigorous clinical trials, systematic reviews, and meta-analyses. When somebody you know says that some questionable intervention worked for them, this is the image that should pop into your head. For just how many people did it not work?